this is Road to Chogam, a special edition right here on CNBC Africa, looking ahead of the 2022 Commonwealth Heads of Government meetings that will be taking place right here in Kigali, Rwanda. My name is Eugene Adangwe, and on this edition, we are joined by the Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Convention Bureau. She is none other than Nelly Mukazaire. Thank you so much, Nelly, for making time to speak to us. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm really sure you have your hands on deck. There's been a lot that is going on, but take us through the picture of how the preparation for Chogam is actually going on from where you sit as the CEO of the Rwanda Convention Bureau. Thank you very much. I would say that Rwanda is ready. Uh, we have been ready for the last two years, if I may say, because uh, uh, this, this meeting was prepared even to happen in the country uh, since um, 2020, but because of the pandemic, uh, it kept being postponed. So this year it's happening, right, starting from the 19th of June uh, up to the 25th of June, and the country is ready. I would say uh, looking at it in three components. The first one is, is, is what are we expecting in terms of the content we want to drive. So as you may have seen it, this is a program that has even a particular and exciting theme, uh, which is delivering a common future and uh, connecting uh, innovating and transforming. So the country has been prepared in terms of what are we expecting our leaders to, to discuss. That's the first thing and the decisions that are expected to happen. How do we look at our people? Secondly, is also in terms of getting ready uh, how to welcome our guests. So uh, the country has been ready starting from all the renovations that have been happening uh, infrastructure wise, but also preparing the service. A lot of effort have been done working with the private sector and other uh, stakeholders in the industry to get ready. Get ready in terms of how we welcome people, but get ready also to leverage or take advantage of the meeting. Right. So I would say that we are pretty ready to host uh, the meeting. Right, and of course you mentioned the theme itself, and I want to hear from where you sit, how do you intend to plug into this theme in terms of connecting, innovating, transforming at the Rwanda Convention Bureau? I would say that the first point of connecting is even the fact of having people gathering in the country. After two years of pandemic, and uh, in particular with the mandate of Rwanda Convention Bureau, which is also to promote the destination and host events, meetings, conferences, exhibitions in the country. So that one coming in the country, we are already delivering on the point of connecting. Because now we have the opportunity of having on, on, on one and physical meetings people being able to be together. And we know for sure when it comes to sealing a deal, there's no better way than when people are sitting face to face, having a talk, a serious one in business, but also a light one when they're sharing a glass or even another, any other moment of, connect, of connecting or networking. So that's one thing. So we are getting together, sitting together. In the perspective of Rwanda Convention Bureau, that's exciting because it goes in line with our, our mandate. Secondly, um, it's innovating. We believe even if we take really uh, lessons we've learned from this pandemic, we have seen so much uh, the, the role of technology and the role of coming up with new solutions, how it is very important. So in the perspective of Rwanda Convention Bureau, we've also been working with the uh, RDB directly, investment promotion and other stakeholders to position the country in attracting events, attracting meetings that go in line with our strategic sectors, that, re, that speak also to our, our, our strategic uh, priorities. So connecting or connect, connectivity, which is one of the ICT uh, lines, not only that, innovation, innovation goes in ICT and other sectors agriculture, health, and all that, it goes in line with also priority sectors of the country. So which position the destination that we sell as Rwanda Convention Bureau. The third one of transformation, I think it's obvious. If you really want to catch up with where the world is going and be able to be not only uh, relevant and efficient in your own context, country, region, uh, but also even internationally, you have to really be on the grill of transformation. Transforming from how you used to do things to coming up with the new ways or even enforcing or improving the way you used to do. So when it goes with Rwanda Convention Bureau, for example, we are also been changing how we 
position the destination and changing with how we attract events. Like one of the new strategies we have now is to see how we boost what we call homegrown events. And that is a way of trying to say not homegrown as in Rwanda only, but also the region. Because that's when you assure the sustainability of that industry, the events industry. So when you look at it in the perspective of Rwanda Convention Bureau and, and what we're doing, it speaks to the priorities because we also align with the priorities of the country. Right. Yes. It's, it's very interesting to hear that. And, and, and those who have been participating or attending past heads of government meetings uh, under the Commonwealth have seen various experiences as far as the places that have hosted Chogam before are concerned. What is it that Rwanda is going to give uniquely to these guests that are coming for Chogam in Rwanda? Well, before I even look at what we give to them as, as, as unique, there's the particularity of Rwanda as a destination itself, which is uh, enjoyed by any guest we welcome in the country. So Rwanda is first of all known to be the safest and clean country. There's the fact that we are really a country that has security and the rule of law, where you can be able to move freely anytime, be able to, to have different high-end infrastructures, as much as they are also in other countries, but Rwanda has positioned itself to really have high-end conferencing, but also sports infrastructures. Another thing is that really Rwanda has a particularity of being open. The visa upon entry, um, uh, regime we have in this country is, is, is one of a kind. And, and then there's that service that we've been also, as much as we, we, we can always say there's better, we can always do better, but there's also that component. We have had a lot of uh, feedback from guests we had in the past that appreciated the, 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 the level of infrastructure they have uh, found here and the level of welcomeness, if I may say, uh, of Rwanda. And then in addition to that, uh, this is a destination where you come, you do business, but we want you also to relax, yeah. to live a certain experience. So a lot of have been done uh, by uh, a lot of effort by private sector and really, we really want to, to appreciate them here to create an environment where people can have different activities, um, whether they are relaxing activities uh, together with the government, like uh, a place like the Nyandungu Eco Park, that have been developed, and also different high-end restaurants, places of entertainment. Um, Fazenda Park, for example, is one of the places, to name a few. And those have been uh, flourishing and growing with the effort of private sector and, and, and the government to create that environment. So all that put together, we believe uh, delegates are going to have a unique experience when they come to Rwanda. Right. Right. Th th there's this uh, thing that we know is being hyped as part of what should happen at the Commonwealth um, uh, meetings, of course, during the Commonwealth Business Forum, for example. Um, uh, it's been touted as a platform for meaningful connections to take place. Talk to me a bit about what the Rwanda Convention Bureau is going into Chogam forums to actually pick out uh, what, 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 what are you seeking to learn from those, you know, from other Commonwealth countries that will be coming in, particularly for the Bureau that you had. Sure. So I would start by connecting the fact that Rwanda Convention Bureau, we don't stand alone. Let me even touch it starting from what the leadership of the government of Rwanda itself is looking at when we talk of Chogam, because we also align with that. We don't stand alone. We are in a certain framework. So let me start by giving maybe a general picture about what the whole Chogam meetings have and what is around it. The, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in, in particular is the meeting that uh, uh, gathers the heads of government and the heads of state. But with that, we usually have also ministerial meetings that precede that. But we have key forums. And these ones should also be seen as very strategic meetings, not only the business forum. We have the youth forum, which is starting from the 19th. It's, it will be the first forum. We have a people's forum. This is a forum that gathers mainly uh, people or players from uh, the civil society, women forum and business forum. So all those forums, discussions there are in line with the priorities that have to be decided on by the heads of state and the heads of government because matters they discuss are matters that concern the people i mean their population those are matters that look at gender those are matters that look at climate change justice youth empowerment or youth involvement and uh, and also, of course business environment so 
as much as the business forum, because by even its word or name is business forum, people look at it as a networking hub, a strategic one. Even other forums are the same because that's where now matters that look at women and, and the women empowerment, women decision making. And that, that women, people, uh, youth, uh, business, it creates the whole ecosystem of our nations. So already that's a big platform where discussions and decisions are made on all those aspects. In particular, the business forum, of course, these are the money talker people or money holder people. So that's why you say it is really one of key uh, connecting platform indeed. And in Rwanda in particular, this year we expect a thousand delegates. We already have confirmed delegates um, that are even now going beyond a thousand for just the business forum. This is one of the biggest business forum any Chogam meetings had had have had. So now coming to Rwanda Convention Bureau, that already speaks a lot to us because having a youth forum, people's forum, women forum, business forum that are happening across Chogam, they gather people who are not only from the Commonwealth, although they come with the Commonwealth. So that's already a seed to even future events and future conferences. Looking even at the business in line with our mandate, that's already a big platform to do follow up with the different dignitaries you meet, with the different organizations attending, with the different delegates attending, because that's where we get, we get business from them. Business, I mean events, conferences, in terms of what we do. So that's already one big thing. Secondly, when you look at business forum, that's where you get investors, sponsors, you get the people who will back up your different plans. So for us, in the line of the new strategy we have of homegrown events, for example, we want to have people we'll partner with to create and curate those events. So that's really a big platform. So you, you see that already in line with our mandate of attracting or selling the destination, tick, because you're gathering close or more than 5,000 people in the country. All those are going to be your ambassadors. Mind you how you're going to welcome them, of course, and which experience you're going to have them. That ticks in our mind and heart every day. What does it take to prepare the teams to ensure that, you know, we, we are not caught with, with the wrong foot forward in, in terms of preparing for all these guests that you say are yes. going to be the ambassadors when you they see. leave? Yeah, uh, first of all, as I said, this is not only a Rwanda Convention Bureau effort alone. No, for example, preparations of, of, of hosting the, the Commonwealth uh, Heads of Government meeting involved Rwanda at large, starting from our top leadership. And the preparations have been led by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, given the, the state of, of the meeting. And we have a big team that comprises a lot of uh, institutions and also even private sector working together. So that can't, all, can't be seen as an effort of just one institution. That is the, the starting point. And that speaks much. That means everybody is involved in his or her field. And everybody feels concerned. And we work together to make sure we address everything. Yes, it's work in progress. Every day you have things you can improve. And what we really liked and appreciated, I think it's even learning from what happened during COVID, is the cross-institution working. Not only government, even private sector, all, even local government across. You will see today, any private person will see this and echo the voice and say, maybe we need to fix this. When will this be ready? How, how can we do better to, to make sure we are doing so? That whole combined effort gives us assurance that we are ready, but even where we may not be in that time, we'll be on it. And people will be addressing and working towards that. Because we have a common um, interest or a common goal, which is to make sure that everywhere, in every corner, we welcome our guests the right way, we give them the right experience, and that is a concern that shared with everyone. So that really gives a certain level of confidence because it is not a one man's show or a one woman's show. It is a whole country effort. Right, all hands on deck, mm. they say. All hands on deck, Now, Thank talk you. to me a bit about um, the numbers now in terms of the benefits and the value if you were to look at uh, the business portfolio yes. that uh, Rwanda through the Rwanda Convention Bureau under the mice industry has been able to benefit from Rwanda joining uh, the Commonwealth you know are you able to share with us the, what numbers look like well when we, we when we talk uh, I would maybe focus on the meeting per se let's say the 
joining, being member of Commonwealth uh, gives Rwanda and even other countries in the Commonwealth already access to 2.5 billion population, a market that is of that magnitude. Yeah. So that means already a lot in terms of business, in terms of exchange of knowledge, in terms of e education. There have been a lot of opportunities in Commonwealth of scholarship, opportunities uh, of, of sharing business already, but also by the fact that uh, heads of government discuss on matters that concern the population and take decisions on that. You're talking of 2.5 billion market. So that already shows a lot of opportunity in, 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 in different uh, things. And that's a market which is close to 2.3 trillion of US dollars by 2030. That's an, a projected amount of uh, economy or market that you see. So if Rwanda, by their business people or even other sectors, we have that market, it's up to us to be ready to take leverage from. When we speak about this particular conference, we may not be able to give you the number now. It will just be a projection. And we are even a little bit uh, conservative uh, about those projections because we are seeing quite a big number of people uh, confirming for this meeting. But just even tipping, speaking hypothetically, if we are projecting to have close to 5,000 people or even more, these are people who are coming in the country, they are spending money in the different restaurants or bars where they're going to go, they are, they are purchasing different Made in Rwanda products here, they are spending in our hotels, they are spending in different other things, they are using Rwandaia, some of them, although it's not only Rwandaia, so, and, and some others are even continuing with visiting in, in our tourism activities. So you see the spillover that you can get out of having 5,000 people international in the country is, is, is really broad. The whole chain when you look at it, the, the quantity of food we are going to consume in these two coming weeks in the country may be maybe, uh, equal to the quantity we normally consume in a month. I, I don't have exact numbers, but I try to, to imagine. So that speaks volume in terms of that. Nevertheless, after the meeting, we always do a report. We always capture um, from the different um, sectors the revenues, and we'll be able to, to, to give a report that will show the exact numbers. But that already gives someone a picture of how much it's impactful in, in the market. Right. Yeah. Nelly, allow me to roll the, the arm of the clock back a bit and talk about how the pandemic has affected the mice industry. Mm -hmm. Away from the chogam, uh, just a bit, we pack that a bit and talk a bit about the, the sector um, and how COVID uh, has affected the sector. Just talk to us a bit about how much of revenue loss in terms of targets and projections are concerned um, uh, that you feel um, the pandemic did take away from us and probably the new measures that have been put in place. Um, you've talked about homegrown mm -hmm. events as one of, this, of, of the options of, of keeping the mice industry uh, active and alive. Just, just share with us a bit sure. about that. Yeah. Thank you. I, I mean, first of all, we know uh, the pandemic affected so much the hospitality or tourism sector all over the world. It was one of the sectors that were so much uh, affected, and mice being one of the, the, the sectors connected to tourism di diversification, if I may say, obviously we were also affected. When it comes to our context, one thing which was positive that is, was that most of the meetings were not totally concerned, cancelled, sorry, they were postponed. That's why you will see that our calendar this year is typically full. So most of the conferences and events we had booked in 2020 uh, were postponed. Some happened in 2021 virtually. Of course, you will have a loss. Uh, because you were expecting to welcome people in the country and they don't come, but others happened uh, postponed in this year. So for the gap of the projection we had that year, I, I remember we had a projection of having uh, close to, um, I think that year we had a projection of 80 million US dollars, uh, but now I would say it wasn't a total loss because most of the, of the events were postponed and now we are gaining uh, that in the economy. And not only that, but even more numbers. Because the reality we are seeing is that in the post-COVID uh, time, although we are still fighting with the pandemic, it's not totally uh, done, though with the whole effort done in the country of vaccination, uh, prevention measures, we can see that uh, we, we can uh, literally stand better uh, against it even today. 
But we see that people, as doors open, as things go back to normal, if I may say, they're even more excited about traveling and connecting humanly. So we are even seeing events where you are projecting, for example, this ITU uh, meeting, which is even currently happening, the projections were, were between um, 800 and 1,000 or 1,200, but now we have more than 1,700. So it shows already the willingness and, and, and the, the sign that people want to go back into that business. So what happened or what, what uh, strategies have we been having which are even taking us forward? One is really integrating a lot use of technology in everything we do. So moving forward today, our conferences have two facets. How would you do it physical and how can you also make it hybrid, for example, virtual? Because we've seen you still have another market that you can attract even virtually and still make some revenues out of it. That's one. Secondly is also how do we start changing, of course, the marketing aspect in terms of working regionally so much, like seeing the market of, of Africa as one market, so that when you are able to go on that platform, when I'm not able, because there were times where everybody could not, but or maybe some could move, others not, how do we make sure when you're selling, you're selling Africa as a destination? Because at the end of the day, we don't sell the same product. It's called mass, but when you come to Rwanda, Rwanda is particular, will never be the same as any other country. The same as any other country. We may be talking of tourism, but the experience, the delegate will leave as much as it's a safari. The safari in country A will never be the same as the safari in Rwanda, let's say. So how do we make sure that we are selling a whole destination in each particularity and we can allow to attract people to come to experience even those different particularities of every destination? Third one is the one I mentioned, for example, of creating some, some starting with creating homegrown events. How do we make sure that we create conferences and events that speak to our strategic priorities? If we're talking Rwanda has one gender, for example, as one of our strategic priority, and we've done some progress, we still have lessons we can learn from others. They have lessons they can learn from us. How do we narrate and curate events that maybe every year talk about gender for three days or four days, you know the hub is going to be Rwanda. And then this one is recurrent. In that case, you are creating sustainability in that uh, sector. And another one is also to try and start uh, looking at what, what we've tried to call um, an, an incubation center. It is an idea we, we are now developing learning from, from, from uh, COVID of trying to attract different young people or even old people who have ideas on creating events. There are people, there are brains who, which are out there who have brilliant ideas of creating. How do we connect the person who have the idea to create an event or an exhibition or a, or a, or a, or a concert or something with the person who has money but doesn't know where to put the money? And then we try to, to, to create that. So that's one of the strategy we have moving forward for, for, for that sector. So that's to name the most strategic thing. But of course, we will continue with the ones we had, which are attending some international forums where mass, mass players meet. Uh, we attend, for example, IMX. It's one of the, of the biggest ones, IBTM, uh, to name a few. And that has made that together with that, going out and hosting events, it has made that Rwanda now today is ranked, uh, the city of Kigali is ranked the second in Africa to host events. Yeah. So th that, that uh, speaks from all that combined effort. Correct. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the things <laughs> that when uh, this idea was being born was to actually position Rwanda as, uh, you know, the next conference hub, uh, you know, uh, tourism, uh, conference tourism uh, destination. Uh, just take us through maybe the, 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 the trends and how far you feel uh, Rwanda has reached with this target? You say second, ranked second. Where do you want to go? Do you want to stay at second? Are we targeting to go number one? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We started from 25 to 19, 17. We are now at second. Of course, we are not satisfied with the second. We want to be the first. And, and that is also backed up by the efforts that the government is doing in, again, making the destination having what it needs. I would mention, for example, Kigadi Arena, Beka Arena currently. <laughs> 
So that was a strategic investment the country did, the leadership did, to on top of having a convention center, having in Hari Arena, having high high end hotels like Marriott, Radisson, uh, local local chain like Wumge, having Serena, Mirkolin, and others to name a few. We have a Four Point Sheraton now also that 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 is, is soon opening and has already softly opened. So together with that. The government, the leadership continues to do strategic investment in key areas to add so that the destination becomes even more uh, flourishing or attractive. With the Chogam coming to Rwanda, um, how will you be measuring results at the end of this big conference, big magnitude event? How will you be sitting back and say we've met our KPIs as the Rwanda Convention Bureau in particular in, in attracting you know, this over 5,000 who have now become your ambassadors, as you just said, Adia. Mm -hmm. So I think measuring impact of Chogam, you would put it again, I'll still come to it in the bigger picture and again come at Rwanda Convention Bureau because we always fit in that. There's, there's what you may call short term uh, results, which is how many people have come in the country, how do we usually calculate based on what we call average delegate spending in that time and that we will use it when we see how much was spending on each hotel. The lowest was how much, the highest was, was how much and maybe you're able to do an average. How much people did spend on transport. So that is immediate number or revenues you're able to see. Yeah. And for sure, you're able to see this is how much revenue we've been able to, to generate. That's immediate. You can ask in restaurants how many people you, 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 you have hosted. For example, to name even now ITU happening, we've had Dîner en Blanc this afternoon. You have close to 100 or more international delegates who are participating in that activity. So that's already a revenue uh, generated. The same will be done for Chogam, and that's what you can call immediate money. However, there's also another you may call medium term, but also long term, connected with the long term. For the next two years, His Excellency, the President of our Republic of Rwanda, is going to be the, the, the President and Chair of, of the Commonwealth. He has an agenda which has priority that are going to be in line with the things that are to the people's interest. Matters of gender, as we say, matters of climate change, technology, innovation, youth, and justice and so on and so forth, which are going to be impactful. That we have seen it by fact when our, our president was the chair of AU, a lot of changes, I mean, happened uh, with the reforms that happened. We believe for sure the changes he's going to spearhead in those two years are going to be impactful, not only to Rwanda as a, as a Commonwealth member, but also to the Commonwealth. Right. That's also something you can say, this is medium in the two years, but speaks also to the long term. But also, as looking at the long term, we stay a member of the Commonwealth. So every decision that is going to be taken in the meeting is impactful to Rwandans in the future. I mentioned in the start, in, uh, when we started about um, in, in, in uh, education, a uh, lot of scholarship opportunities that exist across uh, Commonwealth uh, countries. In education, in STEM, key. That's a very key strategic area in Rwanda, and so on and so forth. To name a few, even just the bilateral or multilateral co cooperations you will get out of Chogam, it is a lot of, a lot of uh, impact it can have. So I believe into those three phases, we'll be able to say this is how um, hosting this uh, Commonwealth Head of Government meeting in Rwanda has been impacted.